your starter. So we just woke up. I like to do my feedings in the morning and at night. You can see it's very bubbly. It's grown quite a bit. I like to switch out my jar once a week so that we can give it a good cleaning. I do scrape down the sides, but it still always seems to get um, some starter that is left and dries around the edge. So I'm going to put a good majority of that into my discard bowl. I keep this from the night before. And then in the morning, I have a new bowl, clean bowl every day. So at night I put discard into it. In the morning, I put more discard and then I make pancakes. So we're gonna make pancakes with that in a second. I have that recipe also on my website. Here, I'm going to put discard in here and then the remainder, I'm going to transfer it to this clean new jar. All right, so I emptied out my jar. I added it here so we can make pancakes that has last night's discard as well as today. And then I le always leave a half cup of starter for another new feeding and I just kind of eyeball it. I don't measure it out. And we have our new starter jar for the week. And again, I like to change mine out every week. You can just kind of keep an eye on it and um, when you need a new clean jar, switch it out. But I usually do it about once a week. All right, now we're going to feed it. I've got my cup of flour. So I'll just add my cup of flour. If you notice that your starter is uh, not as active as you would like it to be, you can always do whole wheat and the whole wheat will really bring a lot of life to it and activate it quite a bit. I've just been using um, all purpose unless I do see a decrease in activity and then I'll, I'll add in some whole wheat as well. You can also do this again, you can also do this gluten-free. I've tested it out with King Arthur's Measure for Measure flour blend and it works fantastic. So now we've done a cup of flour and now we'll do a half a cup of water. All right, half a cup of water. I like to get any uh, wooden spoon or sometimes I will use a spatula, but I use the wooden end and it's great for stirring in these big, <laughs> large jars so that you don't have to try and stick your hand down in there. And I do always start off when I feed it with one cup of flour and then a half a cup of water, but I usually do need to add water to it based on consistency. So that is far too thick. Look how thick that is, where it's more kind of like Play-Doh. I want it to be more liquidy. So I'm gonna grab some more water. And now when I add in the extra water, I usually do about one to two tablespoons at a time because you don't want it to get too watery. So then I'll go back in here, give it a good stir, and we'll see what the consistency All is right. like. All right, so as you can see, I added enough water and I just kind of eyeballed it. And don't be afraid to just kind of wing it a little bit. There are the measurements there as a uh, kind of like to guide you and lead you, but really learn to look at the texture. You want it to kind of be like a nut butter texture or a thick cream of wheat texture. So now I'm just going to, and I make sure you get down in there on the bottom and everywhere, there's no uh, dry flour left. So mix real good. And that's how you'll feed it morning and night or whenever your two feedings are. And I'm gonna rinse off this spoon and come back and grab my spatula here. And what I do with the spatula is I go all the way around the edges and clean the glass so that my glass stays clean longer. So that's the whole reason I do this. Um, I just like to do that so that I don't have to switch out my jar as frequently and I don't have to worry about it getting too dirty. So that's what we're gonna do next. Now keep in mind, this is also how you start your starter with those exact same measurements, a cup of flour, a half a cup of water, mix it until you have a good consistency, maybe add a little water if you need to, and then you leave it um, following the directions on the recipe that we have for the starter. But anyway, I like to go in here and kind of get any as much as I can off of the sides. And then I go down into the bottom and just kind of like squeegee the sides down to help keep, and it's kind of hard to do one-handed, but to keep um, the glass jar cleaner for a little bit longer. There we go. Not bad, not bad at all. And then what I like to do 
is I get a paper towel, get a little bit of water on it. I go around the edges and then around the top a bit where some of the batter or the starter rather might have gotten on so that when I put my towel on, it doesn't stick. And I just like to use the flour sack cloth towels. So it's fed. That is how you would start your starter initially. That is how you would feed your starter. And then I just leave it on the countertop next to my bread basket here. And now I'm gonna make some pancakes. All right, so this morning when I fed Lucy, she was about here, so she's doubled in just over four hours. That means she's really active and she's ready to make some bread. Um, when I did the discard and feed this morning, oh, by the way, it's a new day. Yesterday, things got crazy bread making didn't happen and that's okay. So that's why I'm not editing any of this video. I'm letting you see that sometimes that happens when you're making sourdough, when you're working with sourdough. Um, sometimes it may not fit into your schedule and that's okay. Use the discard from yesterday for pancakes or whatever, right? And um, you can still make your bread the next day, any day. It's fine, it's all good. Um, it's more flexible than people probably think. I know I was super overwhelmed by it at first, um, and it's actually so much more forgiving and flexible than you would actually think. So this is from this morning. I measured out a cup of the discard. All right, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove a cup from here um, so that I have two cups, and you can see this even rose a bit. This morning it was at one cup, and now it's at one and a quarter without being fed. That's the one from the discard from uh, last feeding last night. Woke up this morning, discarded it in here, fed this one. So now when I remove the cup from here, I'm gonna stir this down so I get a true idea without the bubbles of what's in here, which is a cup, right? Um, get, us, get ourselves to two cups in here. I'm not gonna feed it. I'm just gonna remove what I'm using and then I'll feed it at night. So just because I'm removing some to make the bread right now, I'm not gonna feed it right now. I hope that makes sense. Always comment below on any videos or posts that you have. You can check out my website and contact me that way as well. I'm always happy to help you guys figure this out because I know it can be kind of confusing at first. So we're gonna get this out of here and we're gonna make our bread. Here we go. All right, we've set up a makeshift camera here. Let's see, all right, I think you'll be able to see. Yep, you'll be able to see just fine. Okay, so here we go. We'll give this a little bit of a stir down to release some of the bubbles and the air that's in there. And now I will take some of this active starter and we'll get it to the two cup line. And there we are. There we go. And it's midday here. I fed it this morning and I had some discard from this morning. And now I'm just going to get a little scraper. We'll get our little scraper here. So I have my uh, two cups of starter. I'm gonna set that aside. That is now an ingredient, just like any other ingredient in our recipe. I'm going to use a spatula to clean down the sides and the edge a little bit. And I just do this, you don't have to do it. I like to do it to try and keep my container, my jar as clean as possible so that I don't have to clean or change out the jar as often. So by doing this little bit of extra work, I'm saving myself some other work in the long run. So kind of like squeegeeing it down with a spatula. And again, I'm not feeding it right now because I fed it this morning. We feed it, feed it about 12 hours apart, ideally each time. There we go. All right. I do also like to get a little paper towel and wet it whenever I remove discard or uh, also when I remove starter to make bread and just kind of wipe the edges down just a touch. That way when I put the flour sack cloth back on top of it, it doesn't stick to any of the dough that's there. All right, now we are on my kitchen island here. What do we have? We've got our two cups of starter, so that's it. 
get all that starter in there. Oh, I have kids fighting upstairs. They must not know I'm trying to record a video because they're screaming. Hey guys, I'm recording a video. Can it wait? Okay, well, you're gonna have to come and get it or hold on a second. <laughs> I made my kids clean out their room because, oh, I need to get flour filled up in my flour jar. Hold on, hold that thought. Let me get the kid upstairs a garbage bag. I'm making them get rid of all their toys. They have too many toys and they can't keep them clean. And so they are going through and they are cleaning out their toys and their toy boxes. So that's what's going on upstairs. I'm gonna grab that garbage can and I'm gonna grab my flour because the container I keep on my counter is out. So I have to go to my larger container that I keep in our laundry room. And I'll be right back with five cups of flour and I'm going to spoon it into the measuring cup. I'm not gonna use the measuring cup to scoop it out. I'm going to scoop it with a spoon into the measuring cup. It makes a difference, it makes a difference. Okay, I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> I've gotten my kids all the things that they need. I went and I got my flour and I scooped it um, into the measuring cup, not scoop it out with the measuring cup. I've got five cups of flour that we've added in here. Not sure how well you can see that. Um, and then I've got one and three quarters cups of water. So I'm just gonna pour that water right in here. So I've got my two cups of starter. I've got five cups of all-purpose flour, and you can do gluten-free, you could do whole wheat, you can mix your flours, you could do lots of things. And then I've got one and three quarters cups of water. Now, I'm just going to grab a spoon, nothing fancy. Oh, I already have a spoon out. I used... Okay, Genevieve. I have five kids. For any of you that don't follow me regularly on social media, I have five kids. So I'm just gonna give this a little stir. This is the same spoon that I used to spoon the flour out of the flour storage. So we'll just work all this in here. This is going to be a very, this is going to be a very sticky dough. It'll hold into a, somewhat of, I would say, a loose ball of dough. I don't like to put it in a mixer because I like to barely mix it. Um, the less that you do to it, the lighter that your dough will be. Kind of like with cakes or other baked goods, right? So we've got our dough. So see how it has that stickiness? But I'll flip the camera around for you so you can see. I could form somewhat of a loose ball here and it's a sticky, sticky dough. Look at that. See? I've brought it together so that if I wanted to form a ball with my hands, that is the texture and see how it's still sticky. There's some stickiness in there. That's what you want. And now I'm gonna let this rest for 20 minutes. 